Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Sunday, September 15th. I'm your host, Tom Orr. The Marshall game is in six days. The game against Michigan in 76 days. We had Ross Fulton of BuckeyeHuddle.com, one of our X's and O's gurus on the show a couple days ago to talk about the Ohio State offense and how they did against Western Michigan. Now we're going to be talking about the Ohio State defense. When we talk to Ross, we are sponsored by Jeff Rubies of Columbus, proudly offering nationally acclaimed USDA prime steak, seafood and sushi, impeccable service, live entertainment, and an attention to detail that is simply unmatched. Just go to jeffruby.com slash Columbus to learn more and make a reservation today. All right, so we are talking about the Ohio State defense, and boy, the Ohio State defense had a day against the Western Michigan Broncos. They allowed just 99 yards, zero points, hard to do much better than that. So today we're going to be looking at some of the things that worked really well for the Buckeyes in that game and some of the new things that they're doing this year. And we're going to be starting. With the 4-2-5, you probably know what the 4-2-5 is. Four defensive linemen, two linebackers, five guys in the secondary, and quarter-quarter half. So, Ross, explain 4-2-5 and what quarter-quarter half means. Yeah, so we're increasingly seeing, I think we talked about a little bit after Akron, like with cover 4-2, these sort of uh, split safety. So, um, you know, each safety is on. Uh, uh, not There's not one in the middle of the field. There's two of them deep. These sort of... Um, softer concepts for lack of a better word they're using these these i, I say that in the sense of like it, you, there's different ways you can play these kind of coverages right like in terms of how much how up you have your cornerbacks how soft you have them but the what he's trying to i think you're we're seeing these more and more from Knowles, and i think he likes these especially against um like rpo heavy teams um it sort of gives them a balance to each side of the formation to deal with those concepts and it allows their safeties, particularly like to the boundary with Latham Ransom, to fill down. So the corner is sort of protecting. They're playing these top down. They're protecting, uh, you know, the corner is playing off coverage because it allows the safeties to add numbers against the run. So again, against like RPO and um, run specific. But like, you know, also they're able to do this because of like how effective their defensive line in particular is. I thought their defensive line used their hands great. I mean, this play like Ty Hamilton blows up the center. It's pretty, pretty stands out. Um, and like, so, you know, but I think you see it throughout the game, just like the defensive line controlling the line of scrimmage. And like, that gives you a lot of freedom to obviously play sort of softer in the back end. Um, it, the, it, you know, as, as I said, especially like these, these coverages, they'll sort of give up the boundary flat. They'll maybe like allow people to make four or five yard completions and come downhill. Um, but I just think that they, they, they haven't had to do a whole lot on defense, um, but but they don't necessarily need to when they have the defensive line play that they're, they're getting. All right, next up, they're in 4-3 cover one, and this is something that you brought up as a question during the game. Why are they playing 4-3 so early? You're pulling Jordan Hancock off the field. He's a big piece of this defense, and you're pl- pulling him off the field for an extra linebacker. So walk us through 4-3 cover one. Yeah, so we did see, you know, more fourth. I don't think they use any against Akron. Um, and it, but against like 12 personnel or two tight ends, you saw more, some three linebacker sets. Um, I continue to express my skepticism and I, that's kind of re- revealed by this clip. But just in contrast to like the, the split safety stuff I was just talking about, it just limits what they can do coverage wise. Um, in addition to taking what I, you know, one of their best players off the field at Hancock, I, I don't think they're, linebackers are as good as their defensive backs or their defensive line. Not that that's like a necessarily a slight. I mean, I just, they're really high level at those two spots. Um, and so, you know, it limits, you know, one thing Jim Knowles brought from Oklahoma state was like a, a three safety con three high safety concepts. And like, even though they don't necessarily run three high safeties, you see some of it permeate what they do and it gives them some coverage flexibility. Like we talked about in the past, like they can drop to a, um, and we saw at this game, like a cover two where Jordan Hancock, the nickel is one of the deep half and you have Caleb Downs as like the Tampa Bay, you know, Tampa two pull runner. So he's sort of in the middle of the field uh, or you can, you know, rotate the coverage either way. Um, when they get into four, three, they can't do that because they're not looking to drop linebackers back, you know, and, and flip who's going where. So you see here, it's a cover one in four, three and that, that limit. And then they can't, trade off the coverages as much in cover one even so like you have here as i know like western michigan took advantage of that they a little bit they sent their they get into these 12 personnel and then they'd send their wide receivers in motion 
Um, and they, Ohio State has to either follow like they did here with David, Davidson and Vinosa, or they spiked the coverage. And so like Latham Ranson came down on one and Denzel Burke went back to deep safety coverage. But like, you know, it's hard to play man coverage in this situation where you're like chasing across the field. And then he's basically trying to keep up with this deep in cutting route. And so I, you know, I, I, I get why they're, they will probably want to put it on film. They will probably need it against the Iowa's of the world to play three linebackers. So it makes sense to get game reps. I just think that it should continue to be a, a, a sparing or you know small part of their package. All right. And the last one we want to go through today is called Two Steel. And I thought, why is this called Two Steel? And then you watch the video and Cody Simon darn near steals the ball from Western Michigan. They very clearly were not expecting to be him to be where he is. So walk us through Two Steel. Yes. And my caveat to what I just said about the 4-3 is like, to the extent they can do more in coverage with it, it's less of a concern. And they did do some stuff like they ran cover two and they hear they run two steel from the four three. And so I, you know, this is a, a great concept in itself. I thought it was well timed. And so like, as the name implies, it's a, it's a zone blitz. You're running too deep for under and you're basically rotating the coverage. So you're, you're inviting the quarterback to throw right into where you're rotating to, hence like the steel term, right? And so you have, um, basically to the three wide receiver or trip side, you have, um, you're blitzing both, um, you're blitzing Arvell Reese as the mic and Sonny Styles is kind of setting up outside contain as the Sam and then coming in. And then you have Igman Nosen playing the flat. So like a, a trap two corner, right? So he's sitting hard on any like outbreaking route. And then you have from the backside, the will Cody Simon here, he's playing like number two in breaking routes as he breaks on the ball. And then Latham Ransom is like, uh, is in a steel position. So he's, as you can see at the snap, like he's coming down and in and turning his shoulders towards the in breaking routes. And again, so the, the concept is like, you think the quarterback's going to throw hot and you want him throwing where the coverage is. And then, you know, on the backside, you basically, you're running, your underneath defender is Jack Sawyer. They sort of green dog him here where he's reading, like you have only one re- vertical receiving threat immediately, right? In the tight end. And Denzel Burke's playing the other deep half and cover two. But he can kind of pick that up in man. And then Sawyer's, I believe, reading the running back. And once he stays in a block, he also adds himself to the, to the coverage. So cool concept. Um, you know, I think we're seeing like dribs and drabs of, of, of these sort of like pressures that we've, I've, at least I have been calling for from Jim Knowles, where you're not like, it's not all or nothing. Like you're using five man zone blitzes or four man simulated pressures. You know, again, haven't had to do really a whole lot yet. But you can see it's in there. And, uh, you know, as you said, this nearly led to an interception. Well, thanks again to Ross for coming on and explaining all the defensive stuff that you guys have been asking about and wanting to learn more about. There's been a lot of conversation with our X's and O's guys on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby's Columbus at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That is where we have our whole team of X's and O's gurus there to make you a smarter football fan. Let's play with two steel. Boy, a membership at BuckeyeHuddle.com right now. You basically are going to feel like it is two steel because it is a great deal this time of year. Lots of lots of stuff going on there with Tony, Kevin, and I covering the team, Mark covering recruiting, our whole team of X's and O's gurus, including Ross there. To fill you in, answer your questions, and much, much more. It is all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Also, thanks again to our partners at Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, the award-winning debt upscale steakhouse in downtown Columbus, named one of the top 50 steakhouses in America by Food Network. Just go to JeffRuby.com slash Columbus. Check out the menu and make a reservation today. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.